Hi everyone, this is Helen and welcome to Modern Pepper. So today we will be making kamja chan, that is your pureed potatoes turned into pancakes. And we will also be making the dipping sauce as well. So good. Yes, I'm back. I took a couple weeks off because I was traveling with my family and little people and it's just so hard to get things done. But I am back and I'm so excited to make kamjajan because I love potatoes and I mean, who doesn't like potatoes? I mean, if you don't like potatoes, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if we could be friends. <laughs> anyway. So before we begin, kamja means potatoes. Chan means pan fried patties. Simple as that. Kam ja chun. Kam ja chun. <laughs> so, this is a simple recipe. I'm using russet potato, but any potato will do. So, I have about two pounds, and the first thing you need to do is to soak your peeled potatoes in cold water and let it sit on your kitchen counter for one hour. I poured out the water. So if you don't pre-soak your potatoes in water, your potato pancakes will turn gray. I mean, gray colored pancakes. I don't know, it doesn't sound all that appealing to me. So we have to puree our potatoes. So you could use one of these gadgets. Yep, you could get this at any Korean supermarket and use your elbow grease to kind of puree all the potatoes manually. Or you could use a blender and avoid having to, you know, give your biceps and triceps a workout, which is also good too. But anyway, I cut up my potatoes into big chunks and I'm gonna put half of this in here and I'm gonna pour about two cups of water, just enough so that the blender will blend. And I also have a large bowl, a strainer, and to this, we're gonna take a cheesecloth and lay it on top like so. And we're gonna pour our mixture in here as we sort of lightly, lightly puree our potatoes. And we're just gonna pulse it, okay? Like that. And maybe one more time. And I'm just gonna check. So I have like still a few chunks in here. And we're gonna turn it on again and turn it off really fast. Okay, let's try again. We just want to make sure there's no chunks of potatoes. So, yep, this is all done. So you literally took what, five, six on and off switch button and I'm using Vitamix. So as you may already know, Vitamix is very, very powerful. So depending on the blender you're using, just go on and off. We don't want to liquefy it. We just want to lightly puree it, okay? So here is the consistency of how we want to lightly puree our potatoes. Sort of very chunky potato consistency like so. And we're gonna finish off with the second batch. And if you're in the market for a Vitamix, I will have the link for this blender in my description box, as well as on the recipe blog for today's recipe. This one, I've had this baby for close to 10 years, no problems whatsoever. And I use it for all sorts of things too. It's a really, really good investment. It's kind of expensive, but it is a great investment. All the gadgets that we're using, in addition to all the Korean ingredients, all those links will be on my recipe blog. So check it out. If you don't live near a Korean market, you could get all the ingredients delivered to your house. So if you click on any of the links in my recipe blog, as well as in the description box, you are supporting my channel because I will get a small tiny commission every time you make a purchase of any of the online links posted in my recipe blog as well as in my description box. So I would appreciate it if you would click on those links. Thank you. And we're gonna pour our puree in here like that. And using a spoon, 
just move it around a little bit so the excess water drains and we'll come back to it in about 10-15 minutes to squeeze out the excess liquid. We're going to make our soy sauce dipping sauce to go with the kamjajan. You must must have this soy sauce dipping sauce when you have kamjajan. It's like it's a must. To make our dipping sauce for our kamjajan, I have a tablespoon of soy sauce, a tablespoon of water, one teaspoon of gochugaru, that's Korean red pepper flakes, one teaspoon of shallots, half a teaspoon of toasted sesame seeds, one tablespoon of green scallions, and half a teaspoon of sesame oil. Oh, it smells so good. Just mix it up. And you can make this days in advance. Just keep it in your refrigerator. As easy as that. It's time to taste our dipping sauce. Some people like it really salty. I prefer to have it kind of not so salty. Mm, which is the reason why I added water. Oh, this tastes so fragrant. Mm. You could taste the red pepper flakes and it's not super spicy. It's subtle and the sesame oil and the fresh scallion taste in my mouth. Mm. And it's salty and it's kind of a little bit garlicky from the shallots that we put in there too. This is gonna be so good with our potato pancakes. All right, so our potato puree has been resting for 15 minutes and we're just going to lift it up like so. And then we're just going to make a tie around it and just squeeze out the excess water. Just squeeze. And we're not going to take out all the liquid because we need some of the liquid. So you should squeeze until you could still see some liquid coming out, but we don't want to squeeze out all the liquid like that. And the consistency we're looking for is this. There's still liquid in here, but you could also form it into different shape like that. That's the consistency that we're looking for. And we're just going to let this liquid sit because in about 10, 15 minutes, the natural potato starch will all fall to the bottom. And we're going to use that to our kamdajan mixture. So I poured out most of the liquid, but I'm going to show you what's at the bottom. And I'm just going to pick it up with my hand to show you. That is your natural potato starch. We're going to add a few big generous pinches of salt. That's about three pinches of salt and some freshly ground black pepper. And we're just going to mix it all up. And we're going to add two tablespoons of sweet white rice flour, chapsal garu in Korean. And we're just going to mix it up. So the chapsal garu will make our kamjajan extra kind of chewy. Oh, it's going to be so good. It's like kamjajan is one of my childhood favorites. And to this, we're going to slowly add about a quarter cup of water and just mix it up a little bit and another quarter cup of water third quarter cup of water last fourth quarter of water so that's one cup of water that we added so far now cover with saran wrap and let it rest in your refrigerator for 15 minutes Make sure to preheat your nonstick frying pan. Pour about two tablespoons of olive oil. One, two, a generous amount. Make 
make sure to pat down your potato patties like so. Your heat is at medium high. So it's been about two minutes on medium high heat and we just want to brown it so that the other side has that nice and golden color. And continue cooking on the second side for two to three minutes or until you achieve the same gold color as this side. Oh, it's gonna be so yummy and chewy and just so potato happiness in your mouth. And garnish with some radish shoots and some shirigochu. That's Korean chili threads, like so. Okay, my favorite part, the eating part. <laughs> I mean, that's the joy of cooking, right? To get to eat it and enjoy it and be happy. So let's try the big patty that we made. And you know, this is basically Korean latka. You know, if you love latkas, you're gonna love kamjajan. Kamjajan is slightly more pureed than latkas, and latkas are usually shredded. Um, I, I'm gonna have trouble speaking because I'm like so hungry and I'm gonna dip in this delicious sauce and have a bite. Ooh. Mm. Oh boy. If you love potatoes and you've never had Korean potato pancakes, you have to try this. The consistency is a little bit kind of loose in that it's not like those flour-based Korean pancakes where everything's intact. Once you dip it in the sauce, it kind of is ready to fall apart. And that's why it's so good because you, all you're eating is really just potatoes. It's so good. And then the chap salgaru that we added, it just gives you a little bit of that extra chewiness with our potato puree. Mm. Mm. So good. And you know what? When you eat kamjajan, for me, I like to have it with really cold beer. So this is like a really good snack during summer. You know, make this and have some beer and call it a day, right? Oh, that is good. Really good. <laughs> now, you have to be 21 and older to consume alcohol here in the States. Now, if you want to go a little fancy, right, make it a little bit more presentable, you could do the fancy route. Make the size of the kamjajan your silver dollar pancake size. I mean, if you look at this closely, it's so crispy brown on both sides, but it's not heavy at all in taste. You know, we garnished it and made it a little pretty. It's just pretty to take a bite of, right? Mm. Oh, it's so crunchy. Oh, this is yum. Mm. Mm. And some of you are asking, is this sort of like hash browns? Mm, not really. Hash brown is a bit more rougher in texture and you taste more of the shredded pieces or chopped up pieces of potato. Kamjajan on the other hand, it's like not liquefied, but it's it's not as chunky as latkas or hash browns. Kamjajan is a bit more chewier in texture because we pureed it a little bit more. So it's hard to explain, but the taste is completely different, especially when you add this soy sauce dipping sauce. It's a must. It goes together. I could have taken another step of making it uber fancy, like, you know, put on your fancy pants. <laughs> and you could have put a little bit of caviar on top of our small dollar sized pancake kamjajan and have it as like your Korean, you know, version of Bellini's. Oh, so yum. Another bite. Mm. And the small one, it's just extra crispier because the bigger size you have to kind of pat it up kind of thick so that you can flip it 
small one, you can make it a little bit thinner because it's easier to flip. So just keep that in mind when we make it. Mm. Mm, so good. Mm. Next week's recipe, we'll be making choco pie ice cream sandwiches. Yep, we're gonna take choco pie and turn them into ice cream sandwiches. And you probably never had it. So I'm so excited to share that with you because choco pie is your ultimate classic Korean moon pies. It's totally different from your American moon pies though. It is so good. So I'm gonna do a quick review on that as well as show you how to turn that into ice cream sandwiches. So if you have not subscribed, make sure to subscribe. Click on that subscribe button that you see at the corner right there. Click on that. And if you have not clicked on the notification bell, click on the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload my next video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you make this at home and I hope you stay cool during the summer months and still eat yummy, yummy food at home and enjoy it with your family and friends. So until next time, Happy, happy, come judge on time with your family and friends. Bye now.